Hello and welcome back. This is Dawn with another video for Pink Fresh Studio. Today we're going to be doing some stenciling, some ink blending, a little bit of masking, and of course playing with sparkle. Now today I have one of the easiest ways to add very targeted sparkle, so make sure that you stay tuned for that. This latest release has several product suites that you can buy all of the products or just pick and choose the ones you want. They'll have a stamp set, a die, a stencil, and a better press plate available for these. So this Never Give Up one is more of a, it's almost like a folk art floral style, if you will. And I really love this one. I will be playing with this one next. There's also the Joyful Day, which is this beautiful leaf set. Um, I am all about the leaves. You guys know I love them, absolutely adore them. And again, you have the stamp set, the die, the stencils, and the press plate available. And then today, we're gonna be using the, um, amazing things set here. We're gonna be using the stamp set, the companion die here, and then the stencil, but there is a press plate also available for this one. Also in this release, they do have a standalone stencil that is really cool. It is the uh, overlapping geometrics. I really love this one and it looks stunning put together. So here's a sample of that done in like pinks and oranges and yellows. You can see here, this just creates a really cool background. I did a very uneven inking, but you could also do a solid inking as demonstrated here on the package. And then they have two other better press plates, which you could use with your better press system, or you could use it with your foiling machine. This is a plaid, so you'd run it through once vertically and then turn it, run it through again, and you'd get that nice uh, plaid pattern. And then they also have it in the diagonal here as well. And as I mentioned, I am choose I chose to work with the Amazing Things uh, stencils, stamps, and dies today. So the stencil here has five layers, and I'm going to start with my stenciling. I know a lot of people uh, like to start with stamping and then stenciling over it. However, I'm going to be stamping my outline in black, and I have yet to find a black ink that, with especially with light colors, does not smear in some way. So I'm going to start with my stenciling first. And because I'm not doing my stamping first, I don't have an outline as a guide. So I have one here that I've already stamped, stenciled, and die cut, and I'm just using it as a um, uh, guide for where to start my stenciling because I do want to fit two of these on this half sheet of cardstock, and I want to leave enough room to use it also for my sentiments for this card. So here I can be sure that I'm going to be able to fit both of these on this cardstock, and I'm going to have room for my sentiments. So I'm going to go ahead and put down my first layer. Now for my color palette, I'm going a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm going to start with turquoise, and then I'm also going to blend in a little bit of this limoncello with that. Uh, I don't usually go for very, our super bright colors. I'm usually drawn to the more muted colors, but again, as I've mentioned previously, I'm trying to stretch myself outside of my comfort zone and choosing brighter colors is one way that I can do that. I can, I can keep all of the other elements of my card making the same, but just swap out my color palette and this will help to uh, kind of loosen me up a little bit and get me used to working outside of my comfort zone. And generally, I like to start with my lightest color first. So here I'm coming in with that limoncello and I am, uh, I don't wanna say sporadically, but I am, putting down a little bit of that yellow here and there on the leaves, and I'm not completely filling in any of the openings. I'm leaving some white areas still because I'm coming in with that turquoise now, and I'm meeting up with that yellow. In some places, I will bring the turquoise over the yellow, which will move it more towards green, but overall, I did want these to appear more turquoise, so I'm trying to uh, meet the yellow. So we kind of go from a blue into a green into a yellow. Once I'm done with that, I can come through and hit any areas a little bit harder that I want to. However, the second layer is going to give us some detail, so I don't wanna to go too dark just yet. I'm gonna go ahead and lay down that second layer, and this is where we get the veining in the leaves or any of those detail layers. So I'm gonna come in with just a little bit of a heavier hand with that turquoise and with the lemon cello as well. So again, we're gonna get that mix of the blue and the yellow making the green in some areas. All right, so now we need to add our flowers, but uh, as you can see, it's gonna be hard for me to line this up without an outline. Right now I just have these leaves that are floating. I'm gonna pull out the Raspberry Bliss and the Apricot, and then I'm gonna lay down my guide again. I'm gonna get it in the right-ish place, close enough for me to now wiggle that into the exact right spot, and then I can start applying my color. So the flowers have three layers, 
And normally, general rule when you're stenciling, your first layer is going to be the lightest. Each layer after that, you want to get progressively darker. So I'm going to be able to do all three of these layers using these same two colors, and I'm going to get a lot of depth because I'm going to vary the pressure that I um, the pressure that I use or the amount of ink that I lay down with each layer. So this first layer is going to be my lightest layer. And then when I lay down the second layer, I'm going to go a little bit heavier with my color. So I'm just going to apply a uh, deeper color using the same color, but more ink through the second layer. So that's going to give me more intense of a more intense layer of that apricot as well as that raspberry bliss. And just like I did with the leaves, I'm kind of combining the colors. So in some areas I'll have all apricot and in some areas I will have all raspberry bliss. And then in other areas I will have a blend of the two. So now for our third layer, I'm going to go the darkest. We'll get that lined up, push that onto our sticky mat, and then go ahead and start applying our color. And again, this is the, this is the layer that I will go the heaviest or the most saturated with each of these colors. And this is just going to give me a beautiful blend from uh, that apricot into that raspberry bliss. And I absolutely love this color combo. And I love how this one turned out. So off camera, I went ahead and did another one. So now I have two of these. And again, the colors that I used were limoncello, turquoise, apricot, and raspberry bliss. And now it's time to do our stamping. So I've put this in my Misty. I'm gonna grab the stamp set here and we're gonna just over stamp this over our um, stenciling. Now I'm gonna line it up as close as possible. The nice thing about this style of illustration is that if it's slightly off, it doesn't look bad. It actually, I prefer it slightly off, but it is very easy to line up over top. Just, uh, you'll wanna be directly over it, looking straight down, and you should be able to line this up easily. I was able to get both of these, no problem. We're gonna ink this up with some black ink, stamp that down, and since we're using our Misty, if you don't get a perfect impression, you can always re-ink and stamp again. I Mine came out just fine, so I'm gonna go ahead and reposition this. Again, lining it up directly over top of that stenciling. And then I'll pick this up, ink it up again, and then stamp it down. And you'll notice here that my top one is just the tiniest bit off, and this one is kind of dead on, and I actually prefer the top one. I, I like that little white break between the black line and the uh, stenciling of the color. So that's just a personal preference, but again, it's not the end of the world if you don't get it lined up perfect. To cut these out, I'm going to use the uh, coordinating die, and I, I use washi tape to hold mine into place. After all of that stenciling, I do not want my die to shift. I'm going to go ahead and put this through my Platinum 6, and here you can see we've got this perfectly centered and cut out die cut here. Absolutely love it. Off camera, I'll die cut the other one as well, and then we'll use these to create a floral frame around the outside of our sentiment. And then for our layers, I've pulled out something you guys have seen me use many, many times. This is one of my favorite essential dies. Uh, we're gonna be using the Folk Edge Rectangles. Now this comes with a set of nested rectangles and one of them will cut the Folk Edge detail and then you have just inside of that a clean cut rectangle and then the next one would be another folk edge and then the next one inside that would be a rectangle and they progressively get smaller. So I've gone ahead and cut the second largest folk edge rectangle and uh, I wanted to show you how you can create the illusion of another layer without an actual physical layer. Now in the second card I will just cut another layer using these rectangle dies but for now I wanted to show you how you can create the illusion of layers without any bulk. So here I've got the post-it tape here the post-it removable labeling tape and I'm going to line up my rectangle using my grid mat. I'm going to pick out a line here that I'm always going to line up my rectangle on and then I'm going to mask just the line above that. So you can see there I'm going to line it up on the left and the right and I'm going to push that into place. Now this is wider than I need it to be so I can get uh, two pieces out of this. I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm just going to cut off the edge here and then when I use this piece to mask, I'm gonna make sure to use that straight edge, not the edge I cut, just this straight edge on the other side. I'm gonna line my, uh, I'm gonna line my rectangle up again, and then I'm going to mask the line directly above the bottom of my rectangle here. So using that as my guide, I'm gonna push that into place. Now I'm gonna pull off another piece of tape and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other two sides. 
And as long as I choose the same measurement, so one grid square all the way around, I'm gonna have a perfect border of white all the way around because we're gonna come in and we're gonna ink blend. And I'm using a very, very light layer for this of waterfall. I don't want to go too heavy because I just want to add uh, just the littlest bit of color behind my flowers without making it be too heavy. I have that white border around my flowers where we die cut. And so I don't want a hard, stark contrast between the color that we ink blend in the background and then the white die cuts. So here you can see it's just going to add this hint of color. Now, when I remove the tape, you're really going to be able to see that it is actually dark enough. So with the tape one, it kind of looks extremely light. But again, once we remove this tape and you have that bold white border, it does make the ink blending look um, a lot darker than it did before we removed the tape. So now we have this beautiful border of white all the way around this soft haze of blue. And this is going to be the perfect backdrop for our floral frame. Now these sentiments in that set are absolutely beautiful, but they're a little bit more dainty than I wanted for this card. I wanted something a little bolder, so I picked out one of my previously reached favorites. This is Beyond Happy. I've stamped it in Paradise and Turquoise, and then I'm also going to stamp it as well in Blacks. So this way I have some options, and then I'll also have some extra sentiments on hand from the ones that I don't use for future cards. And I went ahead and die cut those using the coordinating dies. And now it's time to kind of figure out my card design and my layout. And I did cut another rectangle using the one size larger clean rectangle from that folk edge rectangle set. And I ink blended it with the same color just around the edges to tie in that blue. And here I'm trying to figure out uh, the layout that I want for the card because I still hadn't decided on the frame at this point. Uh, I was building on the fly and I did decide that I, I like the black sentiment on this card because we have the black stamping for the outline there. So it just kind of tied those two together. And this could work, this layout right here. This is not ultimately what I decided on. Uh, it was somewhere around here that I decided, what if I created the floral frame? So I had the flowers coming in from the outside. Because even if I did it like this, when I trim off those edges, I'm going to have some extra pieces. So I grabbed some blank cardstock and I kind of covered up the areas that would be cut off. This is a little trick that I use all the time. I'll grab blank pieces of cardstock to uh, kind of block off that outer edge. And this will give me a better idea of how the design looks. So here, I didn't like the way that that flower on the left hand side uh, was being cut off. Uh, normally I don't mind a pattern going off the page, but it just kind of looked odd in this one. So that's when I knew that this wasn't going to work. So I rearranged things and I moved that flower to the lower right corner and then I have one coming in in the upper right corner and I moved my sentiment to the center of the card. So this one was working out uh, better for me. Here I was like, I was trying to push myself and I was thinking, all right, we're going to use the blue one. <laughs> we don't in the end, spoiler alert. But I was like, all right, I'm going to take this rectangle die and I'm going to cut these two arrangements so that I get just the portions that I need. This is going to give me a clean corner edge because these uh, images hang off on the top and the sides or the bottom and the sides, I needed it to be cut perfectly and it would give me that nice rolled edge. So I'm gonna hold these in place with a little bit of that post-it tape and then I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine and it's gonna cut this, these die, this die cut <laughs> into the perfect right corner angles for the top and the bottom here. And then I'll have all these leftover pieces that I can fill in the gaps with. Okay, so here you can see I've got them laid onto my card panel here and I've also laid those excess pieces that got cut away into place so you can see where they were. And now I'm taking some of the uh, extra pieces that were cut off and I'm gonna reuse those in the design rather than have them go to waste. We have a lot of leftover, uh, a lot of leftover die cut here that we can continue to build this little floral floral frame with. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, make those those painstaking earth-shattering decisions that are going to take me entirely too long to make, and eventually I'm going to come up with something that I love, which is this. And then I'll just adhere all of these directly to this card panel with a little liquid adhesive. And then it's time to do the fun part. I cannot seem to get away from glitter and sparkle these days, so we're gonna add some of this fun glitter here. 
but we're going to do it in a very targeted and controlled way. So I have a quickie glue pin here and I'm using a stippling motion to apply this glue. So I'm basically just stippling little dots of glue in the areas that I want on this petal and then I'm going to pour some of this prism glitter over top of it. I'm going to let that sit there for a minute so that the glue has time to really grab some of that glitter and I'm going to move to a different area of the flower here and again I'm just going to stipple in some little dots along the edges of the petal and then in a few areas I'll come down maybe a little bit further and a little more spread out. So this is going to add a, a more concentrated closer cluster of glitter at the tips and then it's going to kind of uh, trail down towards the center of the flower. So again, we just are getting a more targeted, more precise application of glitter here. It's a little more controlled instead of all over the place. Again, we're gonna let that dry and let that glitter take hold. And here we have another cameo from Aster. She has decided to get up on the desk and she's blocking my light. I apologize. Look, here she is. I'm gonna get her down, sorry about that. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep going. So I'm going to work my way all the way around this image doing the same thing and then I'm going to pour off the excess glitter. Now initially it's going to look like you have a whole lot of glitter. This is just static. It's holding the glitter in place. So I grabbed a soft brush and I brushed away any glitter that was not firmly adhered in the glue. Now this is a very cheap brush. I think it's an artist loft brush from Michaels or something. So it's shedding hair all over the place, but that's okay. We'll just get rid of those extra hair those extra hairs and then here up close you can see that once we brushed away that excess glitter that wasn't actually adhered to the glue we have a very distinct stippling pattern of that glitter it is absolutely stunning and adds so much interest to this and uh, i just think it is so unique so I'll go ahead and finish up this image again. I am working in uh, sections because again, I want that glitter to dry into the glue. And once you have glitter in areas all over, you kind of have to clear off some of it so that you can start clean in other areas. So we'll finish this one up. And oh my goodness, look at that, you guys. It is so, so pretty, especially in real life. Okay, so we'll review that finished card at the end of the video, but now we had that extra uh, kind of like that master template that I had created in the orange and yellow here, and then we have those extra sentiments as well. So I knew that uh, orange and blue are opposite colors, so these two would actually look really, really pretty together. So I went ahead and played around with making a second card. I did cut an extra two rectangles using that folk edge rectangle die, so I used the uh, the folk edge rectangle and then the one rectangle, the one clean solid rectangle just slightly smaller and we'll layer those together but first i want to add just a little bit of ink blending to that uh, smaller rectangle there that top layer so i'm going to grab a big blending brush and a little bit of i think i used waterfall and we're going to do a really light inking uh, in the lower left corner now i'm going to ink blend it in the uh, upper right but eventually when we put this together i am going to flip it and it's going to be in the lower left so here we go. I'm just going to ink that up and then just do the very lightest, very faintest uh, application of color here. I want it to be very soft, very hazy. And again, once we put this on that stark white layer, you're going to be able to see that ink blending. On, on camera here, it does look very, very light, but that's because we have it up against a black background. Once we put it with that white border, it's really going to pop. So I wanted our orange flowers here to come in from beyond the uh, panel here and then kind of break the plane at the top there. So I cut some of the image off in a straight line and now I've just glued that into place and I've allowed some of those leaves, like I said, to kind of break the plane there on the top and in the top right there. This is just gonna add a little dimension to this card even though it's relatively flat. Everything is just adhered uh, Everything is adhered flat to one another. So I think we're gonna, yes, we're going to end up with our sentiment living right about here. We're gonna uh, stack this and then adhere it. And then I'm playing around with stamping my sub sentiment there directly on the card base. So I went ahead and stamped it on a separate piece of paper so that I can lay it down there before I actually stamp on my card panel because I've already glued this to my card panel. Uh, so if I don't like it, then I kind of have to cover it up some way. And I think, I, and I decided that I did like the arrangement. So we're going to go ahead and stamp that. So I've got everything in my Misty here where it will eventually live so that I can get my stamp lined up 
and uh, in place where I need to stamp it. Then I'm going to move the uh, actual celebrating you sentiment out of the way. Then I'm going to ink up my stamp and go ahead and stamp my sub sentiment directly on my card panel. And then just like we did for the last card, we are of course going to add our glitter because um, I'm kind of obsessed with it. So then the only thing left to do really is assemble these cards. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. And here they are. You can see that I finally settled on the black celebrating you and I stamped that today is your day directly underneath it. Now here I have the exposure turned down on my camera and then I'm using my iPhone flashlight to shine on these to really show off that prism glitter. I cannot express how magical this looks. This is probably the best representation that I can get captured on video. Glitter is so hard to capture on video, but this does a really good job at showing you guys just how gorgeous this is. I matted that main panel with another rectangle that was ink blended to match the interior there. And then one more rectangle with that folk edge rectangle and then adhered that all to a standard card base. Now for the next card, I used all the leftovers. So my initial test piece for that Amazing Things floral and I had it come in off the side of the page and then trimmed off most of it, leaving some of it to break the plane. Again, I used that same ink blended mat underneath that main panel and then just adhered this to a standard card frame. This time I did go with the colored sentiment, choosing that blue. Uh, it complements that orange. They are complementary colors on the color wheel. So when used together, they really intensify each other. So I hope you enjoyed today's cards. Hopefully you picked up a few tips or tricks that you can incorporate into your own card making. Remember, if you're looking for any of the featured supplies, you'll be able to find them in the description box below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future vis visios, <laughs> any future videos. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.